One of the other things that I did to this too, um, I think that the instructions call for these to be about 71.4 or 5 millimeters and I think what that does is it kind of places the uh, tire a little bit close to the, the back here so I just tightened uh, this down like two full turns on this side I was going to try this one here um, and what that does is obviously it centers the wheel considerably better um, where you don't have really uh, hardly any contact at all any any contact like that isn't going to really hinder any kind of function in any way all right, here we are for the fourth and final tire. So if you've been following along uh, up to this point, yes, you know that all you need to do is basically take uh, one of these standard seven millimeter hex, and you're gonna wanna grind off the two protruding pieces that you see that uh, will offset on an SEX24. Basically, those are like bearing contact uh, pieces of metal that keep uh, the proper distance away so you don't bind on those particular axles. However, on this, and I've been trying to rack my brain and trying to figure out, because what, it, what, the, what the deal is here is on these newly redesigned axles from MN, which are awesome, there's no doubt about it. The bearing is not exposed. This is plastic housing on the exterior, so anything that I was trying to put directly in contact with that like a like a 10 millimeter offset hub or anything along those lines was causing binding as soon as you tighten everything down so i finally figured out i've been thinking about this the last day or so that if i grind just enough material away and just enough material away here that whenever i put this on here that whenever it's properly seated hopefully i've drilled this out already and then i'll make a fool of myself good Whatever that's properly seated on there, you should have, just guessing, it's going to be about one to two millimeters of space between the hex and the outer side of the, the housing itself. So that should completely free up any potential for contact. All right, so all I need to do is drill this wheel out here real quick. So I'll be right back with that in a second and I'll get that mounted on there. Okay, got that part done. So we're ready to just go ahead and slide the wheel on and that's gonna fit just absolutely perfect. Because of the depth of this particular nut on here, um, what I've been doing was flipping it inside out so where the nylon is facing in. So the nylon starts on the thread. It just helps it so it, the, the, the socket itself doesn't bottom out and it's easier to change and you can actually get a good positive pressure on it. I think I still need to do this to the front one because I only discovered it on the other two. Because if you get the right sized ones and I We'll tell you what these are in a second here. These are diameter wise, you're going to want, they're like 5.8, 5.9 millimeter diameter, outer diameter. And those are going to just fit right inside of the lugs of these RC four wheel drive wheels. And then just barely fits over the threads of these new axles. Now what I took was my T-wrench, four millimeter T-wrench, and then very gently, you should be able to press those onto the threads without damaging the threads. I know that sounded a little rough, but it's not, it's okay. It's just a tiniest little bit of like edged metal. You're not stripping anything, you're not hurting anything. Sometimes it takes a little bit of force to get them started like this this is certainly not how they want to go on but once they reach a point hopefully they bite on enough to where you can start steering them on with your nut driver and they will line up eventually and Lipo cut off. Believe it or not, that's Lipo cut.